Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today, I'm going to honor several requests that I've gotten over the last couple of years to show folks how to install a DCC sound decoder in a lifelike uh, E8 unit. And this will also apply to various other lifelike and some Walther's uh, units like this uh, that have been produced over the last 20 years. So let's go ahead and get started with the project. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it, and click all. Um, over the last 20 years or so, both Lifelike and later Walther's, after they purchased the, uh, the uh, Lifelike Proto uh, 2000 and 1000 line of locomotives, uh, produced a whole series of passenger E units. Now this uh, particular one here was the first model that they produced in this series, and this is an E8, and it was produced in the late 1990s. I've forgotten the exact year. And then after that, they produced the E7, which is, you know, fairly similar in, in appearance. And finally, they got around to uh, my favorite, the shovel-nosed uh, E6 units. And uh, Southern Railway uh, had all of these in uh, some numbers, and so I also have a large number of these. And I need to install sound decoders in a bunch of them in order to uh, power my passenger trains. So what I want to show you today, then, is uh, how to install a sound decoder in uh, one of these locomotives. Now, to get started with this project, you first need to take the shell off. And that's pretty straightforward. In, in all of these, you just grip the shell uh, at the side skirts and pull slightly outwards, and the shell should just lift right off. Now you do have to remove your coupler first because it protrudes through the pilot and will get in the way. So it just slips right off afterwards though. Let me set this out of the way. By the way, I know people are going to ask about these uh, torpedo tube air reservoirs. The Southern Railway in, in the 1950s as trains started getting longer and they needed more water capacity and uh, uh, looking for places to put extra water tanks, they decided to put them underneath of the uh, locomotives next to the fuel tanks. And that's where the air reservoirs were for braking. So what they did was they placed these long reservoirs up here on the roof, and that gave them more room to install uh, the water tanks underneath. And these have been called torpedo tubes because they sort of look like the torpedo tubes on uh, torpedo uh, PT boats uh, that we used during World War II. So that's, uh, that's a project that uh, I took on a number of years ago. I need to do a few more of these because um, the Southern started switching to these during the mid to late 1950s. So it all depends on when the uh, locomotives were actually overhauled as to when they received their air reservoirs on the roof. Now, this is the original uh, circuit board that came in these locomotives. And then they have all the wires going back to it. You have wires from uh, the, it has dual headlights here, one for the Mars light and one for the headlight. It's got pickup wires that come from the front truck and the rear truck, and then it's got motor wires here. And all of that feeds back to this circuit board. And what I typically like to do is just gut this whole thing, take this out, I replace these uh, incandescent bulbs with um, LEDs, and I'll show you how to do that as part of this project. And basically, that's uh, pretty much all there is to it. And then we will go ahead, and as you can see, we've got several inches of space back here on the back, because the, uh, um, the end of the locomotive shell goes all the way back uh, to here. So we have uh, quite a bit of space. Unfortunately, it is not enough space to use one of the standard uh, uh, Atlas Athern type circuit boards that are, are used as replacements in a lot of locomotives. You need something a bit shorter. Now, fortunately, the um, decoder buddies uh, made by uh, Nix Trains 
uh, and I've done videos on those, and I'll put a link to that above me here. But uh, fortunately, those fit in here quite comfortably. So I'll probably end up using a mini or the uh, standard one. But we'll go ahead and get, to get started on that in a second, because I'm going to gut all of this, and then we'll do the wiring. Now, one thing that I do recommend before you start this project is take a look at the gears. Now, this particular locomotive dates back to the late 1990s, and, you know, Lifelike had a problem. And uh, with all of their uh, production locomotives, the um, plastic axles and gears in between the two wheels here in these trucks tends to crack over time and splits right down the middle. Uh, what you have to do, and I did a video on this, and I'll put a link to that above here, but you have to pull the, these wheels out and you can uh, purchase replacements. Okay, there are two screws that hold this in place. First of all, there's this big one right here, and that holds uh, a, a power transistor in here uh, to, the, uh, to the chassis, so it's a heat sink mechanism. So we're just going to pop that guy out of there, and that's one hold down. And then, got that out, there is a second screw right in here. And I'm going to just spin that out. And so that's all it is as far as removing the actual board. Okay, now I'm going to just uh, snip all of these wires loose at the board because I'm just going to throw this board out. And I'm using my uh, uh, Giron uh, rail nippers or rail cutters. And I know somebody out there is going to say I shouldn't use them only for track cutting. I have multiple pairs of these. I have one that I set aside just for cutting rails and then this one that I use for cutting other stuff. So I'm just going to start snipping here. So what we have here then is the two wires, uh, a red and instead of black, it's blue. Uh, this was produced back in the days, you know, when they were still getting used to uh, the uh, color uh, code for DCC. And then I'm going to come up here because the next thing I want to take out are these two light bulbs. And let's see. Um, if you go back here, you can find where they have actually clipped them together here inside of this little plastic protector and they just literally pull apart and there are three because they used a twin filament bulb in here to make it look like a, uh, a Mars light. Okay, get that one out and then that just pulls out and that's ready for the trash. I don't reuse these bulbs because I think they're they're like three volts or six volts I can't remember uh, exactly what they are, and if you're not careful, you're going to blow them anyway. So this one, the headlight only has two light, uh, two wires, and we can pull that out. So they're ready for the trash. And so then we've got this long uh, blue wire and a red wire that go from the front truck all the way to the back. So, you know, we need to keep track of all of this stuff, although we can figure it out later. And then there's a number of these other wires that are in here that were used for our... Um, for the headlight functions. So what I've done then is I pulled all the wires loose. I took the uh, all of the these red and white wires that were power for the headlight and the Mars light. Took those out. I've uh, disconnected the two wires here that go back uh, from the, that go to the motor, and then there was uh, another red wire here that came from the front truck and went to the motor and then back, and then this blue wire uh, went to the front truck. So we've got to remember we've got blue and red wires are for the uh, left and right rail pickup. And then red and black here are for the motor connection. Now what I want to do next is I'm going to remove this uh, weight right here that sits on top of the motor. Because, uh, like I said, this locomotive has not been operated in over 20 years, so it needs to have the bearings oil. So let me show you how we go about that. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is take a screwdriver, and this one has a flathead, and it just gets inserted in here, and then we're going to pull those screws out. Okay. 
Okay. And we'll just lift this out. I'm going to go ahead and snip this wire here so I can get the motor, so I can get this off of here. Okay, I've got to get this black uh, plastic thing out of the way first. Okay, and here we have our motor. So you can see it looks amazingly like an Atherin motor. I'm gonna go ahead and just snip this guy loose here. Oops, let me get that wire out of there so we don't get any shorts. Now that I've got that cleaned up, I'm just gonna take a little bit of oil and oil these bearings. Right at the point where the uh, drive shaft goes into the motor casing behind each flywheel. Okay, that looks good. Now I can go ahead and reinstall this uh, weight. And this weight is a big, big uh, part of the pulling capacity of these locomotives. And they can really pull quite a number of cars. There it is back in place and now I'm just going to screw it down. And uh, for that I'm just going to take it off camera and we'll get this screwed back into place and I'll be back in a second. Okay I've got it uh, back together. I put all the screws back in. And now what I want to do is run the pickup wires back to our location back here where we'll be able to uh, hook them up to the decoders. Now on this one, because I had, uh, it only went to the motor, I'm going to have to add a, uh, an extension. So we'll end up soldering on another piece of red here and running it back. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is we'll go ahead and just strip some of this wire back here. So we can make a joint real quick there. And uh, this piece of wire has already had the wire stripped off, so we're good to go there. And now I need to turn on my soldering iron and crank it up. So let's go ahead and uh, do a little soldering here. That one. And I'm going to need a little bit on this one. Need a little bit on this wire too. Okay. And then I'm just going to touch them together here. Okay, there. And let's get a little piece of uh, heat shrink tubing slide it into position over the joint. Okay, and that's going to protect us from shorts and it will also protect the joint so that it doesn't get broken. Although in this location it's not going to be subjected to any stress. Okay, so we got power pickup to the back. We've got power pickup already here provided in the back. And then we have our two wires to go to our motor. So we're in pretty good shape as far as that goes for all the wiring. So let me dig out a decoder buddy and we'll start working on that. Now one thing we're going to need to do is establish a, a place for the decoder buddy to sit because you know you don't want it sitting down here on top of the, uh, on top of the uh, truck tower and uh, banging up against the uh, drive shaft. So what I like to do is I take a piece of styrene sheet and I just make a uh, small pad here and that'll serve as a place where I can uh, put my uh, decoder buddy or my decoder and any speakers that I need to install. So let me do that. I'm just going to hold this piece of uh, black plastic styrene sheet in place and I'm going to make a mark right here and that will allow me to go ahead and cut a, a rectangle of styrene to fit in place on that pad. So I just went ahead and snipped off a rectangle of that black plastic styrene 
and that'll give me a good place to mount not only the decoder body, but a SugarCube speaker right next to it. Now, another thing I want to do while I'm in here is I'm going to make a couple of cutouts right in here and also on the other side for the, the uh, truck pickup wires from the rear to come up to up through. So let's give that a shot here and we'll give it on that side as well. That way, I'll be able to bring my wires up directly to the decoder itself. Now, let me go ahead and figure out how I'm going to mount that. Okay, what I decided, I'm just going to use my uh, Loctite Super Glue Gel, and uh, it does a great job of uh, in situations like this. Because it's a gel, it takes a little bit longer to dry, and gives you a little bit more working time here. So. What I'm going to do is press them out. And we'll pop that into place. And hold that down while it sets up. So now we have a good platform on which to mount our uh, Decoder Buddy Mini. And um, we'll also be able to put our speaker right next to it. And I'm only going to use one speaker because when I did the E6, I put two in here and it was way overkill. So I'm going to learn from my lesson. I'm only going to use one uh, of these sugar cube speakers in this installation. Now to hold everything in place, I'm going to use my good old Scotch uh, double stick foam tape here. So let me peel off a bit, just long enough for the decoder buddy. And I'll peel that free on the back here. And we're ready to install our Decoder Buddy Mini here. Okay, there we go. So, step one is completed now. And we'll have room right here for our, uh, for the uh, speaker itself. This is the 21-pin uh, decoder that I'm going to be using here. It is a Loke Sound version 5 decoder. So I just want to do a quick test fit and make sure everything's uh, correct before we move on. Okay, so it just goes right in there like that. And then the speaker will be right next to it. And they're all within the uh, confines of the uh, shell of the uh, locomotive. So let's go ahead and we can make the next connection. So let's go ahead and strip these uh, wires here for the uh, power pickups. There we go. Now I'm going to uh, solder the two wires the, uh, for the uh, tra track pickup from the front and the rear together first. And then I'll connect them to the board itself. So there's that side. And we'll get that one. I'm going to make a little bit of a uh, dab of solder right down here. There. And there for our track pickup. And go ahead and solder this one into place. There we've got that. And we'll just do the same thing with the other side with the blue wires. Yeah, I went ahead and stripped those two wires and had them clipped together so that we can uh, connect the right rail pickups to the board. There. And now that those are done, we can go ahead and attach them to the board itself. There we go. So we've got power going to the board from both tracks. 
The next step will be, I think I'll go ahead and do the motor leads right now because they're back here, motor one and motor two. And um, I've got to connect these two wires to them, which means I have to add another splice. I've gone ahead and spliced the black wires and the and two pieces of red wire together to get things long enough. So now I'm going to uh, cover them with heat shrink tubing and seal that down so they're protected. Now as I've explained in the past, this is a polyolefin heat shrink tubing. And so you can just take your soldering iron and gently rub it and it will go ahead and shrink down. So you don't have to mess with heat shrink guns or any kind of thing like that. It'll do it just fine without melting. So now the next thing I want to do is go ahead and cut these down to length and make the attachment here. So let me do the cutting and then we'll do the soldering. Now, as I've said in the past, always hold on to the uh, material that comes with your, or the instructions that comes with your decoder buddy, because it gives the locations for all of these connections. So you can see the orange and the gray connections here. Orange is the positive. Now I'm assuming that the red wire on the motor lead is positive. So that would mean that orange is motor one. So let's go ahead and hopefully that'll be correct. Otherwise I can just come back and change that at a later date but I'm going to add some solder to these pads. I'm going to go ahead and solder the red wire to motor one. And the black wire to motor pickup two. And like I said, if I get them backwards, it's a quick and easy thing to come back later and swap those motor connections around. So we've got power, we've got connections to the motor. The only thing left is to do the speaker connections. I went ahead and uh, attached a piece of double-sided foam tape to the back of the speaker and dropped it into place here. And uh, these are the sugar cube speakers that I get from Streamline Backshop. You can find him on the internet at uh, S bs4dcc.com or just Google Streamlined Backshop. And he offers these uh, in various sizes and a number of different enclosures. So what I'm going to do here is uh, make the connection between the speaker contact tabs here and the two tabs here on the speaker itself. So let me go ahead and we'll pretend those uh, contacts back there. And since I'm only doing uh, one speaker, the speaker polarity connections don't matter a bit. So we can go ahead and just connect between the speaker and either one of these contacts. Let me go ahead and uh, get these wires cut and ready, and then I'll show you how to solder uh, to these little contacts on the uh, speaker. On the uh, sugar cube speaker, you have these two little spring clips that stick up. I just put a little bit of solder on each one to pre-tin them. Be very careful you don't get anything on this metal backing because you don't want to short your speakers out. You could blow the decoder amplifier that way. Okay, now I'm just going to make that connection right here. Like that. And bring it across. And under the back of that decoder board there, and use my tweezers to hold it in place while I do the soldering. I can't bring it across the board like this because the decoder has to go here. Okay, now let me pull it back out here a little bit so that it, uh, it's out of the way and is not going to uh, interfere with the shell. There we go. And this one here, I'm going to just bring it 
and tuck it out of the way. So now we're just going to do the same thing with the second one here. So let me get my tweezers and we'll and solder it. And then I'm just going to bring it, in fact I think I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to bring it underneath of this one. That one needs a little bit more solder on it. Now I'm going to hold it in place and connect it to the board. And that's it. Here's where we stand. We've got the Decoder Buddy installed on its little styrene mounting pad here. We have the wires coming back to uh, provide power from this, uh, the two both trucks here connected to the Decoder Buddy board. And then we have the motor connections made here to the board. And finally we have our speaker connected to the board. So at this point the only thing left are the lights. Now what I want to show you here, I've taken a couple of the uh, small LEDs that I use and these are surface mount LEDs and you can see there's just a little fly speck of yellow right here and right here. And all I did was super glued that little LED to the back side of this lens here and to the bottom of this mount here. And then I took some of this Uhu tack which is a black sticky putty that I use a lot for this purpose. And I put a pad of the Uhu putty right here behind that LED and another one right here uh, behind this LED for the headlight. So we've got a headlight and we've got a Mars light fixture. And I'll show you uh, how I attach those to the Decoder Buddy board here in a second. So those wires just run back through the uh, uh, rear of this cab material, of this cab uh, casting here, and then on back to the uh, decoder body itself. Now, I've shown you guys these LEDs many times in the past. Now, I'll provide a little bit more specific information about these. I got these on eBay, and um, you know they're they're available from China from a number of different dealers. I will put the information on there for the latest. Uh, dealer that I purchased these from. And then you can go look him up on eBay uh, if you desire and order some of those. They're fairly inexpensive. They come with a 1000 ohm resistor attached to the positive lead. So all you, have, you can cook, hook them up directly to a decoder. If you have a decoder that has resistors on the board, then you just snip this resistor here off and put it in your parts box and make your connections directly to the board. So let's go ahead and take a look at how I'm going to connect these to the Decoder Buddy Mini. So I've isolated the two wires that come from the headlight and they're right here and this is the one with the resistor and it's positive. The positive wire uh, from the headlight needs to be connected to the U+. The function wire is negative. Now let me go ahead and I'm going to put just a touch of solder on those locations. There's the one for the negative and here's the positive. This positive goes to the pad marked U plus. There we go. And then the other wire goes to A0 forward, or F. And of course, it's not long enough, so I have to add a little bit of wire to it. I added a bit of wire here to the end of this uh, negative connection, or this negative wire for the uh, LED. So let's make that final solder joint. We now have the headlight attached. The next thing is to add the wires somewhere to a function for our um, for our Mars light. My options on the board are A1 or A2 on this side, A6 and A10 on that side. So I think I'll go ahead and use A6 here. Uh, at this point we're on the final leg. All I have to do is make these two connections right here. These are the uh, 
Mars light. This here is the positive lead, so it goes back here to the U+. Plus. And we'll get that one on there. Don't like it that close. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. And right now I need to add a little bit of solder here to A6. Let's get that done. There. And then we can attach the wire. And that finishes all of the wiring for this installation. Let's get these wires out of the way here uh, and go ahead and install the decoder because it's a simple matter of just popping it in place on top of these pins and just pushing it down far enough so that it's fully engaged there. And that leaves a little bit of room between the bottom of the decoder and the wiring underneath. So I'm going to pull that around here out of the way. Let me get my tweezers and do that. Because we want this tucked in here close so that it uh, doesn't interfere with the, uh, with the side of the shell going back on. And I'm going to take it over and uh, turn on the track and give it a test uh, on, the, uh, on the programming track to make sure that I haven't got any shorts or anything. I don't see anything, but let me go ahead and do that and uh, we'll see if it's uh, going to run for us. Well, I got, the, uh, I got everything installed and uh, the body shell back on without any problems. And I uploaded the uh, dual uh, 567 EMD uh, sound file specifically for this class of locomotives uh, from uh, Loksound. And um, right now you're listening to the idle. You can see that we've got the Mars light on, that's the upper light. And I'm going to go ahead and switch directions. And you can see that the, uh, the headlight has come on now. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and crank her up. But first, let's listen to the bell. This is the automatic on and off, on off bell uh, that comes in the sound package. I haven't made any modifications to the sound package as yet. This is exactly as it comes uh, from uh, Loke Sound, except for the fact that I did change it to the M5 uh, horn. Otherwise, it, it's, you know, the default settings. Okay, so that's an actual EMD bell. The, uh, this sound package was recorded off of a prototype E8 locomotive. So it's exactly what we've got sitting right here. Uh, let's go ahead and listen to the M5 uh, air horn. And I'm going to go ahead and crank it up. It's got quite a bit of delay in the start, so it'll, uh, it'll power up first, and then it's going to start moving the string of uh, cars on down the track. And I'll pan it. Um, this isn't going to be as smooth as possible because I'm panning with one hand and holding the throttle with the other. So we'll see how this works. Got a little bit of the brake sound with these decoders. Uh, typically, until you get the beat up a little bit, you don't get much of a brake sound. So let's put it in reverse. Give three shorts to indicate we're uh, going to back up, and we'll go ahead and proceed to back up. Now you'll note that at this point, and you might be able to see it, that that headlight has gone off. And in the default setting, the headlight is set uh, to go off uh, when the locomotive is going in reverse and come back on. If I change it to forward, you'll see it just came on again. 
So that's the default setup. You can also set it up to uh, do Rule 17 dimming and the whole nine yards. Now, one of the things that I still have to do, I have to go through the whole programming process to tweak the sound settings and the volumes and, and all of that. And um, if there's enough interest amongst the viewers, um, I will go ahead and do another video on that sometime in the next week or so, uh, showing you how I go through the whole process uh, on my uh, computers in Windows 10 using the local programmer in order to uh, in order to program this locomotive. So uh, let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. So that's about all there is for this week. Uh, have a great weekend and we'll see you here uh, next week for another video from the DCC guy. Bye now.